Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Paul of the Cross on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Please stand for hymn number 13, All Hail the Power of the Thank you. 
Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time that it lies waste, it shall have rest until seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired the king of Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me, for he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness. 
Prince of Thoughts in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are the hand, his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are in the middle of Lent, and the church invites us to pause, to pause from our season of repentance, to rejoice. And we ask ourselves, why should we rejoice? Why should we have any hope? Because so much is happening around us that does not indicate hopefulness. But now we are like Nicodemus. We come to Jesus at night, Jesus who is the light, to show us a glimmer of hope. For God so loved the world. You see, we have hope in Jesus, and the readings help us to understand how this hope unfolds in our life. Let's look at the first read, the second book of Chronicles. The first line of the reading says, The people committed infidelity after infidelity. They were sinful people. But God so loved the world. You see, they were, they were captured by Babylon. They were put into exile. But amazingly, the Persians defeated Babylon and Cyrus, king of Persia, did something amazing. 
He said, you people who are in captivity, the Lord has told me, he has given me a mandate, a mandate, this is a Gentile, who should know nothing about God, he says, I have been given a mandate to send you home. Not only that, but I am going to send you home to build me a temple. Imagine that. To build a temple, go back home and to build a temple dedicated to God. So you and I now, after committed infidelity, after infidelity, and sin, after sin, sometimes you feel so hopeless, so dejected. But remember, God so loves the world. God really loves you. And he really loves me. As the second reading says, God is rich in mercy. So he calls us his hopefulness. And he says, you see, you, whatever you have done, I love you. So I said, Jesus. So you are in darkness. All of a sudden, I have created a light for you. And I want to embrace that light. For God so loved the world. So you and I now, as we journey through Lent, we have to pause and recognize that our redemption is at hand. Our redemption is coming. It is on the threshold. And all we have to do is open our lives to receive the light of Christ. Because he's our redemption. For God so loved the world. How can we not rejoice on this beautiful Sunday, fourth Sunday of Lent, when the church invites us to pause and to examine our redemption? Because that's what Jesus told Nicodemus. He says, God so loved, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the question for you and for me is, That's all it takes. We have been saved by faith. That's what Paul told tell the Ephesians. So now it's up to us to believe that. When we believe that, then we begin to see the glimmer of hope, the light of Christ on the horizon, ready to bring us, to usher us into the resurrection, into new life. So I urge you, as you continue your journey through Lent, recognize that whatever you do, or what has happened to you, and it doesn't look too good, it doesn't look too hopeful, change the song, change the hymn, because God so loved the world. And so now we have hope. We have hope in Jesus. We have a new life in Jesus, and so we cannot come to his table. We are invited now to come to his table to celebrate that hope. When he feeds us, he nurtures us and loves us. And then you and I can be the love in the world. The world that God so loved, we can now remind the world that God so loved the world. And so now, as we come to this Eucharist, as we come to the table of the Lord, let's recognize that there's work to be done. But it's a joyful exercise of us bringing the love of Christ into the world, bringing the light of Christ into the world, reminding the world that our redemption is at hand. Hope is on the way. We have been saved by grace, if you believe. And remember, if you believe, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen.
So let us now as a people of faith profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, where all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and received the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the rest of the dead and the life of the world to come. Blessed be Almighty God, the giver of salvation, who decree that we should become a new creation in Himself when all will be made new. Let us cry out to Him as His children. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all holiness, source of all truth, pronounce the fullness of your blessing on our Holy Father, Pope Francis. All bishops, especially our own Bishop John, all priests, deacons, religious, and lay faithful. Purify us with the grace of your Holy Spirit and wash us clean with your life-giving word, even as we embrace the discipline of Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, in your goodness, unify this nation, our island home, Jamaica, with love poured into our hearts to remove malice, hatred, bitterness, so that as people we may be strengthened to face the challenges caused by crime and violence and the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We seek, O oh loving God, your divine guidance for all our young people, especially our students that they may respond courageously to your leading, to, the, to that which is true and good and holy, even as they try to negotiate these challenging times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a worshiping community, gathered in your name, teach us, Lord God, a loving concern for our neighbor and those in need that others may experience your love in and through our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, bring your loving comfort to the suffering members of the body of Christ, especially those entrusted to our prayers. Renew their strength, increase their hope, and help them experience your third healing we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Give our deceased loved ones, O oh merciful God, the perfect joy of, each, of your eternal love, and number them among your chosen ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for a family's invocation. God our Father, in baptism you called me by name and made me a member of your people, the church. I praise you for your goodness. I thank you for your gifts. Father, bless your church with love. Raise up in Jamaica good and holy families, loving husbands, wives, and holy parents and children. Raise up from our families and friends, dedicated and generous leaders who will serve as sisters, priests, brothers, deacons, and lay ministers. Send your spirit to guide and strengthen me that I may serve your people. Following the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
whose name I offer this prayer. Amen. We join whoever prays those for blessed mothers, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, your Son, the word of life spoke peace to the sinful world. Teach us to follow his example, turn hatred to love, conflict to peace, and death to eternal life. We ask us through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all those who suffer the cause of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strengthen those who care for them, comfort the families of the or the victims who have died. For the mighty and the God, all the support of our human beings, the good of man, and the sorrows of the human nation, who suffer because of this pandemic, to be the pain of the sick, to strengthen those who care for them. Lord, the major of the souls who are dying, and throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in him and rest for love to Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offers and bring eternal remedy, O Lord. Pray that we may both faithfully revere them and present to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just to do the Lord's salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your rich gift each year, you are paid away the sacred task of feast with the joy of mind made pure, so that we're eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. So, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, though the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as of end. We exclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are holy, indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending out your spirit upon them like the dofoe, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time the trading turned willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to the disciples, saying, Take this, hold me down it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. And a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave to the disciples, saying, Take this over to drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the morning of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and administer to you. Humbly we pray that for taking the body and the blood of Christ may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Prince our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Paul of the Cross, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May we merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, you to the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, for my divine teacher, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, to not in our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God. You one who takes away the sins of the world. The last of those four to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter my heart. Only say the word, my soul. Let us pray. Oh God, and like everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray. With the splendor of your grace, we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Have a happy Sunday and a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look upon those who go to you, Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. Eucharist is ended. Thank you, Jesus. Hey.